Hello everyone, my name is Peter Jones and I'm on the committee of the Lute Society, but by profession I'm a TV producer and director. I used to work for the BBC and now I work for the Royal Opera House and I produce cinema broadcasts of opera and ballet. And as you can see, I'm also a keen amateur lute player and over the course of these videos that are going to be hosted on the new Lute Society YouTube channel, I'm going to teach you how you can film yourself at home, edit those videos and then upload them to the internet. Now there are a number of reasons why you might want to do that. You might want to share some of your playing with friends and family on social media. You might want to be making a talk about the loop for a loop society meeting. Or if you're an amateur player like me, you might just want to film yourself so that you can have a look at your own playing and see everything that's wrong with it. Now I'm sure you've got something at home that you can film yourself on. At the moment I'm using my laptop on a table to film myself. I could be using my phone or I could be using a tablet, or I could be using a stills camera that has a video function on a tripod. One of the key things you want to be able to do is have a static shot. So a laptop's great because it sort of is a built-in stand. A phone works really well if you can anchor it down somewhere, and be aware that this camera on the back is usually better than the selfie camera on the front. So if you can have it with the lens pointing at you, from the back of the phone, you'll get a better picture. So I'm going to use my webcam on the laptop. I'm using a Mac computer, and the best way to record your webcam on the Mac is to use QuickTime Player. So I'm going to use the Spotlight Search function to call up QuickTime Player. I'm going to go to File, New Movie Recording, and that's going to open up the webcam like that, and I can hit the Record button. If you're using a Windows PC, just use the camera app, which you can find in the start menu, and then switch it on to video function and hit record. So now we're recording. Every time you hit the record button, I want you to think of three things, sound, lighting, and framing. First up, sound. At home, I'm going to be using the inbuilt microphone on the computer, and they're not bad, there's also inbuilt microphones on the phone and the, and the tablet that you could use as well. Or you can buy microphones that plug into a USB socket or a mini jack socket and they're pretty good as well. The best thing you can do at home is to try and get yourself into a quiet space with a reasonably nice acoustic and not sit with your back against a wall that might provide echoes or unfortunate sound quality of the loop. So if you can sit in a little bit of an acoustic, not too close and not too far away from the microphone. If you're too close, you're probably going to pick up a lot of action noise on the string and lots of unfortunate, horrible ticks that we try and avoid when playing the lute. Now lighting. What you want is a consistent lighting source. I'm sitting at a north-facing window with a neck curtain across and it's diffusing the light and it's giving me a fairly consistent lighting source. If I was at work, what I would do is actually close all the curtains and relight to begin with with electric light. And that again will give me a consistent light source that doesn't change over the course of the video. It's also important that, that you realise that light has a colour. So daylight is very, very cool and firelight at the other end of the spectrum is very, very warm light. And you don't want to mix the two types of light. It's best if you can to have one light colour as your source. So for me, it's a bay window. You want the light to hit one side of your face. You don't want it to hit you square on otherwise you look a bit like a newscaster. You want to have a little bit of shading across your face by lighting one side in favour of the other. So you might want to sit at a slight angle to your light source. For me, I'm about 45 degrees away from the, the flat plane of the window. Let's talk a bit about framing. There are three things that I want to talk to you about with framing, which is eye line, headroom and looking room. First up, eye line. The key thing for this is to make sure that your eye is at the same plane as the camera lens. So I have actually propped up my computer on a book on Matthew Spring's Indispensable The History of the Loot in Britain, which is just the right size as well to lift up my computer so that my eye is in line with the camera lens. If you're using a phone, for example, make sure that the lens is in line with your eyes. I think we've probably all seen videos on lockdown where people are filming from a low angle and what you get is double chin, nostrils and ceiling, which is not good. What we really want is a nice sense of being in the company of the person.
person making the video. Headroom is the distance between the top of your head and the top of frame. And it's actually very important because it has sort of psychological effects. If I slump down like this and give myself too much headroom, I look a bit short and stubby. And if, conversely, I'm too high up and I'm cutting off my best asset, my bald head, uh, it's also not a good composition, it doesn't look very nice. And it's very tempting if you're trying to include the lute, say, that you suddenly let your head go out of frame and it's not very nice at all. So really we want to be square on so that um, there's about three fingers of room between the top of my head and the top of the frame. And that gives a nice sense of composition. Looking room is a bit more complicated. Looking room is to do with where there is empty space in frame. At the moment, I'm talking directly to the lens, so I am going to be central in the frame. If I was going to be looking at some music, for example, which I'd put off camera, if I start to look off camera, the amount of looking room is important. What I've done now is, is made this bit of the, the, the space behind the back of my head unnecessarily important in the frame. Because I'm looking out of frame, what I want to do is be looking into the picture. So I'm going to make myself some more space in the picture by shifting my chair so that now as I look off camera to play, the looking room is correct. That means there's more space in the direction in which I'm looking than there is behind my head. And that makes for a much nicer composition uh, for a fill. So the other thing to do with uh, looking room is I, th I imagine that a lot of you are going to be recording yourself playing and so you're going to need to look at some music. Now, it's very important where you put your music then. If you put it too far away from the lens, like this, if I'm playing here, you can see that I'm ending up in profile and you're losing one of my eyes and it's a very unsatisfactory shot. So one of the key things to do is to move your music as close as you can to the lens so that you can maintain a nice shot whilst also looking at your music. Also, if you put your music down low, so if I was to have my music on the table where, I'm, uh, where my computer's sitting at the moment, I would end up probably croupying over. You'd end up seeing a lot of the top of my head. I'd look quite um, heavy-browed, and it wouldn't be a very, very nice shot. So if you can keep the music at the same eye line, I remember discussing eye line earlier, so keeping the music at the same height as the lens, just off as close as possible to the lens, you'll end up with a much nicer shot. So now I'm going to sit up straight and get into a playing position. And I think it's really important and nice for people to see both your hands when you're playing. You've obviously spent a lot of time practicing and you, the money is in the hands. So you want to be able to see both hands nice and clearly. And this for me is a nice shot looking out at your music and playing like this. So have a go at home, pick up your phone, your computer or your tablet, work out how to record yourself and try and think about sound, lighting and framing every time you hit record. In the next couple of videos I'm going to show you how to edit videos together and how to upload them to the internet.